I joined an online game over Discord, playing Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. You don't need to know the system to appreciate the story. I made a half-elf rogue named Alice, and prepared to play. Here are the players with fake names. Anthro Fox Fighter, Anthro Cat Rogue, Anthro Wolf Warlock, DM, and me, Elf Rogue. I was immediately questioned by the DM about me not playing an anthropomorphic character, and before I could answer, he said, Hmm, well, I guess we would like to have one non-animal. I was instantly not okay, and definitely not coming back for session two. All of the characters then started to describe as they, oh god, with zero input from me or the DM. I left the channel and was about to report them for unwanted adult roleplay, and then I realized that I had joined an ERP furry game without noticing. Definitely not my worst D&D experience, but definitely the most embarrassing. I mean, you did get what you came in for, and they wasted no time apparently. It could have been worse. At least the DM didn't go into graphic detail explaining what nodding is. But uh, you know what nodding is? Uh oh. No, oh uh, no. I, I don't no. want to know, but. Spare no, him. I do Spare not know. Him. No, break it. Break him. No! Help him. Leave him alone! What? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jacob Crow, and welcome to the Crow's Perch, where each week we dive into tabletop horror stories, all collected atop my roost for your leisure. Running a game can be difficult, especially for new dungeon masters just starting to learn the ropes. And if you think it's hard now, imagine how difficult it must have been before Matthew Colville, D&D Beyond, and High Speed Internet. Remember AOL.com? You remember. The whispering of audio still echoing in the back of your skull as the dial-up sound begins to play, like the faint death rattle of a long-perished song, still echoing from the labyrinthine abyss from which it was birthed. It remembers you. It knows you, though sealed so far away in the recesses of your mind. It calls. You've got mail. Anyway, this story takes place in the early 2000s, following the tale of a newbie DM and their first time running a game for Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition. So, without further ado, let's post incessantly about how cool it was to be born in the 90s and early 2000s on Facebook, because we're all going to be 30 and dying soon, as we gather up a murder and dive right into this story. This is a story of my first time dungeon mastering. Well, sort of. I had technically run something that I called Dungeons & Dragons before, but it was really just a silly freeform game I ran with friends and family when I was a little kid. This time, we were running legitimate Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition via an AIM, AOL Instant Messenger, private chat room. I had a very basic campaign setup. Andrew, the Paladin, Tyler, the Sorcerer, and Jason, the Orc Cleric, all met up in a tavern, where they were brought together by my character, a ranger, who wanted to hire them to deal with some orcs who were causing trouble for his town. I won't go too much in depth because it's not super important, but the takeaway is that Tyler the Sorcerer quit the game after two sessions. No big deal. He just wasn't much of a gamer and had only joined because we practically begged him to. So, we were fine with letting him go. It was his choice. We were now running a game with only two PCs and my ranger NPC. To make up for this, Andrew agreed to run two characters, making a favored soul, basically a cleric with sorcerer casting, who was the younger brother of his paladin. Andrew also brought in two friends of his, Caleb, and the one who is the subject of today's story, Patrick. Patrick was playing an angel in service of the god of good dragons, Bahamut, the same god that both of Andrew's characters followed. So theoretically, this should be an easy fit into the team. Maybe it would have been. Except that Patrick had the personality of a poop sock. His character barely interacted with the rest of the party for one. His first session ended up getting disrupted after he got into a fight with Jason and then left the chat in a huff. Next session, 
We ask Jason and Patrick to apologize to one another. They did, and we continued. We started out in our camp, not far from the Orc's Fort, discussing the party's plans to assault the enemy position. They came up with a pretty decent plan. It would start with an aerial assault, courtesy of the wyvern that the party had managed to befriend, perks of having several followers of the Dragon God, each speaking draconic and having insanely high charisma and diplomacy, and rain down flaming arrows on the fort to set it ablaze. Then, Patrick the Angel would cast resist energy on the remaining party members, and we would rush in and take our enemies down amidst the flame. To this day, I still don't know how the fight started. I still have my logs from that session way back in 2006, and I read through them again to write this, and I still have no idea why this happened. But Patrick suddenly started screaming in out-of-character tags that none of us were listening to him, especially tearing into and making lots of anti-Semitic slurs against Andrew. The thing is, I don't even know what the other players were supposed to listen to. As far as I can tell, he completely agreed with their plan. And if he didn't, he certainly never said so until the point where he started screaming. This time, Patrick decided to storm off in a huff in character. His angel went to scout the enemy fort. I told him to roll a hide check to avoid being seen. He rolled a natural one. Instant failure. And had his position peppered with arrows from the trigger-happy orcs in the fort. This is when he left the chat. He showed up again a few minutes later, saying that I should never question his ability to hide because he went through ROTC and he knew how to set up an ambush position. <sighs> Whatever. The other players proceed to finish up the orc fort while he makes pop culture jokes, talks about the popcorn he's eating, boasts about how cool his spells are, and invites his girlfriend to the chat with us without permission. We ended just outside a cave in the back of the fort, where the orc's leader, a fiendish orc barbarian, was holed up. The next session, Patrick immediately starts acting up again. The first thing he does is call lead in the marching order, then specifically say that his character refuses to walk into the cave. Why? Because, and I quote, I hate railroading. I'm still not sure what he meant by this. So, Jason's orc cleric pushes the whiny butthole angel into the cave, and we get our boss fight with the fiendish orc and his three surviving minions. It's a tough fight, and several party members almost die, Patrick the Angel spends most of the fight making pop culture jokes in character this time until the fiendish orc at last expires. His rage wore off, and he lost the plus 4 constitution bonus, dropping him instantly to negative 11 hit points and killing him. Combat over. Going through the spoils, the party discovers that the fiendish orc was wielding a plus 1 orc double axe, and Patrick wants it. Why does he want it? No one knows. His angel is better with spells. No one in the party has the exotic weapon proficiency feat required to use this weapon. But Patrick wants it. He wants it so much that he gets into a shouting match with Andrew's favorite soul about who gets to have it. Patrick the Angel declares that he is Bahamut's will, and as such, he gets to have the 2,000 gold axe to sell for his personal gain and will straight up murder the favored soul of his own deity to have it. At this point, I finally had enough of this nonsense, as Patrick the newly fallen angel flies away in a rage. We end the session. I spoke with Patrick privately after this, and he admitted to me that he had tried to keep the axe as revenge for another game where Andrew took a magic item that his character had wanted. He further implied that getting revenge on Andrew may or may not have been the only reason he joined my game in the first place. He did apologize to me, and asked if he could roll up a new character. He wanted to play a pyrokineticist, and asked if I would allow him to burn down the quest giver's village so that he could meet the qualifications of that prestige class, which requires you to set a building on fire just to see it burn. I told him that no, he couldn't, and instead he was banned from the game. But the story doesn't quite end here. I met Patrick again a couple years later, when he asked to join an ongoing roleplay that Andrew 
Jason, Caleb, and myself were a part of. Patrick openly stated in his first session that he was only here to get revenge on me, the worst DM he'd ever met, and that his character was going to be a rival to mine, whose sworn duty was to kill my character. Needless to say, Patrick was not invited for a second session. I also learned at that time that Patrick owned and maintained a website dedicated to naming and shaming people that he had roleplayed with and didn't like. It was literally hundreds of entries long, with real names if he knew them, and a description of how the person had offended him. Somehow he never realized the one common thread between all of these bad encounters. I thought about trying to find myself to see what he had to say about me, but I got tired after the third page. You sure this story took place in D&D and not Warhammer Fantasy? My man's Patrick is out here writing up his own book of grudges. Regardless, Patrick sounds like an absolutely awful player, intentionally placing himself as a burden to hold his team down for funsies. Meanwhile, the rest of the party and the DM were forced to deal with his nonsense, while Patrick goes on to complain why he can't take all the loot and body blocks a cave so he doesn't get railroaded. You did the right thing by kicking him, and I hope your adventures since then have been amazing. And I think that's where we'll end today's story. And if you enjoyed today's stories and would like to see more of them, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as we proceed into this week's Art of the Week. Art of the Week! This week's Art of the Week by Patron Eggcroth is a piece of art by Eladin Rex, portraying a broody rogue Jacob Crow who has his purse become a tad bit lighter as he is caught off guard by the sneaky thief named Nev, Eggcroth's character. What follows is an Assassin's Creed-like chase scene. You better hand me back my coins. You want it back? Then come and catch me. Also, holy crap, the lighting in this scene is incredible. Thank you to user Eggcroth for your submission, and Eldon Rex for your fantastic artwork. You too can submit your art by posting it on the Crow's Perch Discord server in the art channel, or by emailing it to me in my business email, my channel's about section, or by sending it to me in DMs on Twitter. I would like to personally thank my patrons for supporting the channel. Like my burb, Reuven Gritters. But of course, it ain't a Patreon outro without the Counts of Quills. Like Evix, King Drazil, Christian Pip, Cosmosis, Koki Spokes, Rikus, Vincent, Haley Thompson, Zero Fang, Mexican, and Netscape Navigator. You got patrons! Or more specifically, the Barons of Beaks. Like a modest pastry, Jester King, Gentle, Misfit, Gibber Woods, Wormy, Matthew Moquini, Den of the Drake, Mick Yeatley, and Anya. But there's more patrons, oh, oh my god, like the Dukes of Feathers, it's like Staniel Dasbu, Henna, General Constantine Chase, Happy Rex, Stevie, Doc Salty 96 and Acroth. You too can become a patron yourself by joining in on the Crow's Perch Patreon link in the description down below, where you too can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month. Is this e-begging? Well, that depends. Did you pay? Patrons who pledge at least three dollars or more might be able to find the answer. Hmm, I don't know. And with all of that out of the way, I will see you next time as the crow flies.